Hello and welcome to lesson 23, the goodness of fit test. The idea of the goodness of fit test is somebody makes a claim, like for example, I claim that the grades in the class are evenly distributed. So basically that's saying you'll have the same number of A's, the same number of B's, the same number of C's. As you can see, my claim is not even close. They're not evenly distributed but I'm still gonna make the claim that they're evenly distributed. So one thing we need to do is count the number of categories. So there's A, B, C, D, F. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And for some reason, they use the letter K for categories. So categories, there's five of them. The next thing I need to do is find out what the sample size is. So add up all of these students and see how many that is. Calculator is looking a little bit bright. Let me turn that down. Okay, that's better. So a 12 plus a 16 and a 22 and a 3 and a 5 means there's 55 students. So N equals 55. And when the claim is that they're evenly distributed, Basically, you just take the N and divide by the K. So basically, 55 students total, divide them evenly into five categories, and 55 divided by five, that should be an 11. 55 divided by five, that's an 11. And if this turned out to be a decimal, just go ahead and use the decimal. So this turned out to be a nice even 11, so that's what's expected. So if the claim is true and they are evenly distributed, then there should have been 11 in each category. So this is 11, 11, and in theory, that's what it be, would be if they're evenly distributed. You can also say that the claim is that the proportion of people that get A's equals the proportion of people that get B's etc. for C's and D's and F's. So there's the claim. And with this there is no H sub O and H1. We just go with the claim just by itself. Okay. Now this is going to be a chi-squared test and the chi-squared distribution looks like this. So it starts at 0 and then it's skewed looking like this. And in order to find the critical value, well, for one thing, this is a right-tailed test only, so there's only a right tail. That makes it nice because then you don't have to decide left tail, right tail. This is always right tail. And then if we use 95% level of confidence, then this little tail over here would be 5% or 1 minus 0.95 is the 0 0.05. And then we need to look up the critical value. So for many of these videos, I've been using the calculator to find the critical values using the distribution right here, but they don't happen to have this one in the calculator. So we actually have to rely on a table and wherever you clicked on the the video, I did put a link to this table right here. So this is the chi-squared distribution, and the ones over here are if you have a left tail, and the ones over here are for a right tail. So we're actually only going to be using the right side. And what I'm looking for is on the right side, there's 0 0.05, so I use 0 0.05. And also we need degrees of freedom so I know how far down to go in this list. Well, the degrees of freedom just comes from the K minus one. For the t-test, it's N minus one, but for this one, it's K minus one. So the degrees of freedom, so in general, degrees of freedom is K minus one. So in this case, it's going to be five minus one, it's four. Okay, now back to my piece of paper. 
So over here they have the degrees of freedom and degrees of freedom four is right here. And then I like to make a line right there. So this is degrees of freedom was four. This is the column that said 0 0.05. So then I go right here and that says a 9.488. So that's the critical value, 9.488. So the critical value is 9.488. All right, now we're almost done. Now in order to get the test statistic, we're going to use the calculator. And I'm gonna put these observed values in list one and these expected values in list two. So go to stat and then edit the list. And I happen to have some stuff left over. So I need to go to the top of the list and then use clear to clear out the list. And L2 also, clear it out. And now L1 is going to be the observed values. So that's a 12, 16, 22, a 3, and a 2. And then the expected values, all of those 11s go in list 2. So 11, just keep typing 11 five times. There we go. And then for the last part, you go to, you go to stat, move over to test, and this is called the goodness of fit test. So you go down to where it says GOF for goodness of fit. So that's letter D. So D, the chi-squared goodness of fit test is what I'm using on the calculator. And when you hit enter, it's then going to ask you where are the lists. So the observed should be in list one. So if it doesn't say it, put second one. The expected values should be in list two and put second two for L2. And then they wanna know degrees of freedom, which is four. And then just go down to calculate. And from this, all we need is the chi-squared, which is the 26.545. So the test statistic I squared equals a 26.545. So this is the cutoff for things being unusual. Anything that goes past 9.4 is unusual. This goes way past that. So that means that we can reject the claim. So the claim is false. In other words, grades are not evenly distributed. If they were, they would have all been 11s. They are not close to 11s. So my claim was false. Okay, then we need to do one more example. So basically with the goodness of fit test, there's two types. One is it says evenly distributed. So you just take the total number of people, divide by the categories, and then that is what you use for all of the expected values. Then with the second type of example, it could give you specific percentages to use for each category. So we need to start off the same, the number of categories, count how many that is, and that's still five categories. And then add up the number of people, and the, these are the same numbers as the last example. All I'm doing is changing the claim to show you the idea of the two possibilities for the claim. So when you add these up, that still equals n equals 55 people. And then this one is saying that for the A's, there's gonna be 20%. So change the 20% to a decimal, which is 0.20, and then multiply with the n, multiply with 55. And then go on to the B's, and I said for the B's, it would be 
So as a decimal, this is going to be 0.25. And then it's always going to be the total times the total number of people. So next is a 0.25 times 55 people. And for the C's, I said it was going to be 40%. That's going to be 0.40 times 55. For the D's, I said it was going to be 10%. And then finally, for the F's, I said it would be 5%. And 5% is 0 0.05. It looks like I should have made the box a little bit bigger because now I need to see what these numbers equal. I'll just write it right below the box. That's okay. So let me clear out that old problem and then we've got 0.20 times 55. So that's an 11. And then next is 0.25 times 55. That's a 13.75. And then next is going to be 0.40 times 55. So that's 22. And right here you might say it's not possible to have 0.75 of a person. That's true, but right now we're not talking about actual people. We're just saying in general, in theory, how many people would that be? So you go ahead and use the 13.75. And then on to the next one, 10% of 55. That is 5.5. And then last, 0 0.05 times 55 people, and that's 2.75. So this last one is 2.75. Okay, now for the claim. So basically, I said that 20% of people will get an A, so that's saying the proportion of A's will be in decimal form, that's 0.20. The proportion for B's is 25, so that's in decimal form, 0.25. The proportion of people that will get C's is 40%, so that's 0.40. And then for the D's, I said that it was gonna be 10%, so that's 0.10. And then last for the F's, I said it would be 5%, so that's 0 0.05. All right, now we just need the picture. So the distribution looks like this. So it starts at zero and then it's, it's skewed. And degrees of freedom is gonna be the same as last time, so that's going to be K minus one is four. And we're going to use 95% level of confidence, which means that this right tail, because remember we only use the right tail for this test, is 0 0.05. And that's going to be the same critical value as last time. So it's still 0 0.05, and degrees of freedom is 4. So if you go down, that is the 9.488. So the critical value equals 9.488. And then let's see if we can reject my claim. So these are gonna go in list one and these are gonna these are gonna go in list two. So just go to stat and edit. And these numbers are actually the same, so I can just leave those in there. And then these are supposed to be an 11, and then a 13.75, and then a 22, a 5.5, and a 2.75. And just go to stat, tests, and then scroll down to the goodness of fit test, which is letter D. And because I'm still using list one and list two, I can just leave that there. Degrees of freedom is actually the same, so I can just leave that there. Color doesn't matter because I'm not graphing it. And then it says that chi-squared equals 181. 
That seems very, very large. Did I mistype something? Oh, look at right there. When I went to type the 22, I accidentally typed 222. So the reason I thought it was strange is because on the first example, these numbers, okay, that's close, but these aren't close, these aren't close, that's not close, that's not close. And so you should get a big test statistic in order to say that it's false. Well, when I just did it right now, I got like 181, which I thought was weird. And that's because I mistyped this one, which of course I did that on a um, purpose just to show you that nobody's perfect. Sometimes you have to go back and check your work. So let me double check. 11, 13.75, a regular 22, a 5.5 and a 2.75. Okay, good. Now go back to stat tests and the goodness of fit test. And this is all the same, so I can just skip down to calculate. That's more reasonable. Chi squared equals a 1.8. So for the last part, the test statistic chi squared equals a 1.8 and that was actually a 1.80 so you could leave it at 1.8 or to emphasize you could say 1.80 so if it were to go past a 9.4 that would be considered unusual this is not even close it's actually landing more like right here so that means we do not have enough evidence to reject the claim because if you look at these numbers, a 2.7 compared to a 2, that's not off by very much. This one is perfect. This one's only off by 1. This one's off by 2 and a quarter. This one's off by 1 and a half. So they're not off by that much. So we cannot reject the claim.